Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. It's a glorious Thursday. There's a cold front here in Pretoria, so I'm wearing a jacket. It's getting a little nippy. It was three degrees out this morning. Not pleasant. Celsius for all of you Northern Hemisphere people in America. I'm sure there's other places in the Northern Hemisphere that uses Imperial units. Yes, it's not just America that uses Imperial units. You're lying to yourself, Reese. Anyways, don't lie to yourself anymore about how much your wallet is actually spending on PC parts. Go to our website, UFD Deals, to save money on tech products around the internet. We compile the best deals. We have affiliate links to everywhere. You click on the button, you save money, we make money, win, 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 win. Ah, so check it out at the link in the video description. UFD.tech is where you're gonna head on over to do that. But let's jump on into the first little bit of hot news, which is a new AMD processor that was previously unknown. It's called the AMD Flute. And no, I'm not joking. This is a real thing because you thought you knew everything about what AMD was gonna come out with. I mean, especially when it comes to the next generation consoles, didn't you? You thought AMD Gonzalo was all it was that was going on the PlayStation 5. Well, apparently the SOC that's gonna be developed for Microsoft's Project Scarlet is gonna be called AMD Flute. And a benchmark has appeared on the user benchmark database. It's gone now, but there was some key intriguing things on there, including the fact that it's basically everything we already know about the, the, the Gonzalo APU. Eight cores, 16 threads, Zen 2 architecture, 1.6 gigahertz base, 3.2 gigahertz boost, and then a Navi 10 Lite GPU. We don't have the idea of what it's gonna to clock to, but we do know that the Gonzalo APU the GPU on that one's gonna clock to 1.8 gigahertz. So I would expect basically the exact same thing from the Flute SoC. It really, really, really does look like the PlayStation 5 and Xbox 2X is gonna be all, they're, they're the same thing. There's no difference between them. They're running the same SoC. They might have different proprietary media when it comes to solid state drives, but the SOC is gonna be exactly the same. They're probably gonna have exactly the same performance. The console wars, what, what does it mean anymore, okay? You can cloud compute, you got Google Stadia. What do you, what do you need a localized SOC for, huh? Huh? Oh, just so you can play games without lag? <laughs> Get out of here, that's so 21st century. We're in the 23rd century now, folks. Speaking of which, let's talk about third stuff. 23rd, it's a bad transition. Threadripper 3000. There has been a leaked benchmark of that one coming in at 16 cores, 32 threads, which is exactly what the 3950X is gonna be, except for this is gonna be on the high-end desktop socket. So hopefully it still has 64 PCI Express lanes and supports quad channel memory, and it's better for like content creators in that way. But uh, the base clock was running at 3.6 gigahertz, while the average boost clock was four gigahertz, which is okay when you compare it to second gen Threadripper. I mean, our 2950X that we're using in our edi editing station gets pretty close to four gigahertz by itself. And considering the 3950X is supposed to have a 4.7 gigahertz boost clock, what is this? I don't know, we'll have to find out, especially when you have a bigger die. You can just dissipate more heat, increase the TDP to 185 watts, and there you go. You should have better setup, but Maybe it doesn't scale that way. We'll have to find out when we have more Threadripper 3000 information, but it does seem like it's gonna perform pretty well, uh, but also seems like Threadripper doesn't need to exist either. And we talked about two things that just showed up in the user benchmark databases. However, as of, I think it was yesterday or a couple of days ago, user benchmark shifted all of their weightings on their benchmark comparison rankings so that like Ryzen just sucks potato right now, it's terrible, because they transitioned the 100% score, so the base level score from a 7700K to the 9900K, which makes sense. It's the fastest one out there, has the best clocks, It like it's the best gaming CPU, even if it's not worth it from a value perspective and the 3700X and 3900X make more sense. That's fine, I'm okay with that being the base, but then, the way they change the rating is that they increase the amount that single core score like was weighted for its overall score and they downed the weight of multi-core score. And so if you look at this comparison of the 3900X versus the 9350K, the i3-9350K, it says that the 9900X is just 3% better than the i3. 
because of how it's weighting all of the performance from it. And that's just bull crap, it's not true. Obviously this is a little weird, it probably shouldn't be this way, especially as there's been time for new applications to take support of more cores and more multi-threaded applications. The, I mean, at the very least, we can agree the 3900X is way more than 3% better than the i3-9350K. At the very least, even if you can't say that it's better than the 9900K, you could say that. But this is bull crap. I doubt it's due to, it's probably due to an Intel bias. It's probably some Intel marketing scheme. They're just, they can't beat AMD, so they have to beat them in shady ways by compromising all of our beloved benchmark sites. Maybe, I don't know, that's just speculation. That's guess, we'll find out. Oh, and this is, uh, this is the last time I'm gonna talk about this, but now, finally, officially, the MSI Max motherboards that have the increased BIOS chips to actually have support for all of the new Ryzen chips those have launched, those are officially out. We talked about how they were going to do it, we talked about how they announced it, and now you can go buy one, so in case you want that. And then Corsair did, is, what? Did a big move. They did a, they did a what now? Because in, in a thing that just, I'm so confused by because they have always been working with system integrators and then they decided, hey, we're gonna make our own pre-built systems. We're gonna make the Corsair One, then we're gonna make something that isn't the Corsair One and is just using off the shelf parts of all Corsair stuff. Well, they decided, oh, that's not good enough. Now we're gonna buy Origin PC and we're just gonna have them under our portfolio and have a boutique computer design. So they're going more the way of Dell with Alienware. It's kind of okay, but at the same time, it also feels like Corsair could alienate themselves from the system integrators that they worked with in the past, and they might just set up shop by themselves, and other system integrators will just have to choose companies like Cooler Master and Asus over Corsair. We'll find out. It's a weird move. I'm not sure I understand it. Now I want you to answer this question honestly. Do you like talking to robots? Because that time is over, my friends. The House of Representatives in the United States just really solidly passed a vote on banning robocalls from carrier networks. They're gonna force networks to kinda make sure that they're actually authenticated calls and robocalls can't happen anymore. They can't just call 50 million people at once. And the bill passed 429 to three. It's also going to work with the carriers to roll out call authentication technology so that they can make sure that everything's on the up and up. So if, in case you wanna keep talking to them robots, just, just hold on for dear life right now, okay? Your moment's gonna run short. Speaking of run, running short moments, the Galaxy Fold, which folded itself into oblivion earlier, is now slated to release in September. That is Samsung's official statement that it's gonna release in September in select markets. We'll probably get a second unveiling of it at the August 7th Galaxy Unpacked event. Cool. And now in today's version of, wow, you guys suck, BMW is deciding to charge people $80 a year for something that other car manufacturers are just giving them for free, and that is the usage of Apple's CarPlay. So in case you're spending tens of thousands of dollars on a slightly luxury car such as a Beamer, you now have to also fork out $80 a year for CarPlay when other companies that are in the same prestige category do that for free. This is bull crap. BMW, this is dumb, stop. Speaking of this is dumb, stop, the CTO of Tesla resigned, or at least it was announced that he resigned yesterday. One of the co-founders, JB Straubel, stepping down from Tesla, marking yet another executive who has left this company. It kind of feels like Elon is all by himself at this point, which obviously isn't true. However, on the earnings call from yesterday, he made sure to say, uh, this, this is not some lack of confidence in the company or the team or anything like that, which of course they would have to say in order to make sure that investors don't panic, which they are because of this next version, which is that they are just really burning through cash. Nobody's expecting Tesla to make a profit just yet. They were just expecting to minimize their losses to 40 cents per share. And instead it was nearly three times that at $1 and 12 cents per share. So they, they're, just, they're just losing money. They're shipping as many cars as they ever have, but not at a profit. And so, woo, how do you keep getting money, Elon? Where is this infinite supply? Is it from your meme sales? Is that how you're doing it? You got a good black market of memes.
Thanks, Papa. Let's talk about Elon Musk's other venture, Starlink, which is the space satellite program. You know what Canada says? Not about that, mate. <laughs> I don't know how to do Canadian accents. Anyways, Canada is going to be investing $85 million in their own internet satellites for rural areas uh, because they just don't want to trust themselves to American companies or South African people, such as Elon Musk. And while the uh, space race for internet satellites is heating up, you know what else is heating up down here on Earth? Streaming services. Okay, you don't have enough, okay? Do you have 15? Okay, that's, that's 25 too few. You need more. AT&T is deciding that they're gonna launch another streaming service this fall. For whatever dang reason, nobody cares AT&T, this one's gonna fail, you know it is, okay? Hulu, that one's been established for a while, that's gonna stick around. Netflix, they'll be fine. Disney Plus, that's gonna be an up and comer. HBO might still retain something, they, I guess like HBO Max, so that's four. ESPN, maybe. Like, then you have everything you need, but ESPN's technically owned by Disney. So are they gonna include that on Disney Plus? I can't answer that question. Let's talk about answering things such as why is Microsoft so crappy at everything? Well, they're gonna be redesigning the start menu to look worse at least according to this leaked internal build swap, it's terrible. How about instead of fixing the start menu, you fix your search function so that when I actually search for a program I know is installed on my computer, you don't send me to the Windows Store. And then Huawei, because of the trade war that's been going on, they decided, hey, we can't trust those filthy Americans and they're gonna be trying to invest around half a billion dollars into developing their own ARM micro server system chips. I slung that sentence together well. And are you a streamer? Not like somebody who has streamers that hang down, but like video games. Anyway, Streamlabs is rolling out an update to their OBS, which will actually allow you to have better integration with it on a single monitor setup so that you can actually watch everything and still have a stream going on with one monitor. It's actually kind of cool. So you can see that down below in the video description. And then in case anybody here who watches this stuff, has used the trading program known as Robinhood, where you uh, you know you trade stocks at a low fee. Well, apparently they were so busy developing what they do that they forgot about security and they stored all your passwords in plain text. So go change your password. And I'm gonna change my underwear pants. I'm gonna change my tone because I'm gonna be done with this episode of Hot News. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out our website, UFD Deals. To save money around the internet. We don't take your password, so we can't store it in plain text. Get subscribed to Hot News to stay up to date on everything we wanna talk about that's going around in the tech industry. And I'm Brett with this channel, and I'll see your smiling face again in the next video. Cheers.